Okay, this is a homework help video for Unit 7, Worksheet 1, and I'm going to start with question number 4. So the directions are to identify the center and the radius for the circle. So I know this is a circle because I have um, an x and a y value both being squared. So to find my center, I want to do this in alphabetical order, so x before y. And so this is x plus 4, so I'm going to do the opposite, so negative 4. And then y minus 7, the opposite is positive 7. So my center is negative 4 and 7. And then for my radius, I look for my constant, which is 4. And I want to take the square root of 4, which is 2. And so now I have my center and my radius. So to sketch it, I want to go to my center, so negative 4, 7. So somewhere around there, I know these are really tiny squares. And then my radius is 2, so from my center, I'm going to go up, down, left, and right 2 units. So from here, I'm going to go up 2, and down 2, and then left 2, and right 2. And then once I do that, I'm just going to connect those dots, and then that's my circle. Okay. All right, and then let's take a look at question number 7. So same thing, I want to find my center and my radius first. So for my center, go alphabetical order, x before y. So here I have x plus 5 squared, so my center would be at negative 5. And then I'm not adding or subtracting anything to the y, so then the y would be 0. So my hk would be negative 5, 0. And then for my radius, I look for my constant, which is right here, 225. And then I want to take the square root of 225. So to do the square root of 225, if that's not something that you know, you can always use your calculator, right? So you can always use your calculator to help you with that. And so the square root of 225 is 15. So now this one is an inequality graph. So with it being an inequality, so because I have a less than, greater than symbol right here, I need to be a little bit more careful. So because it's equal, so because it's a solid line right here, when I graph it, I want to make sure I do a solid line. Now it's not, but if it was without the line underneath, then I would do a dotted, right? So this one does have a solid, so when I graph it, I'm going to go ahead and do a solid line. So I'm going to go to negative 5, 0. And then I'm going to go all directions, 15. Okay, so that's going to be a little bit beyond here. So I'm just going to kind of pretend up and down 15. And then the same for the left here, right? So the left, I'm just going to put kind of a random dot out there, assuming I'm going about 15. And then I'm going to go 15 to the right. So, so somewhere around there. And then again, I'm going to connect this with a solid line. And then the other thing that's unique with the inequalities is I also have to do shading. So for this one here, I want to shade to where my circle, right, this is my circle, the area of my circle that is greater than or equal to 225, which was my radius. So I want to shade the part that I am greater than or equal to my radius. So then that would be every place outside of the radius's reach from the center. And so that would be all of that. Okay. Okay, and then let's take a look at question number 10. Let's see that one. So for question number 10, we want to write an equation of a circle um, that is shifted from the origin four units down with a radius of 3 root 2. So I'm going to go ahead and write out what my equation is without um, any numbers substituted in. So that's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to my radius squared. Okay. So my h is with the x, so that's my left and right movement, and the k is with the y, which is my up-down movement. So if I look here, I'm going four units down, and that's it, right? I'm not going left and right any, I'm only going four units down. So this, because I'm going an up and down movement, 
that's affecting my y value because that's y, right, moving up and down. And then there's nothing moving left and right. So because there's nothing moving left and right, my h would be 0. And then if I'm doing 4 units down, so it's, I'm looking at the formula here, so y minus, and then 4 units down, down is a negative direction, so negative 4. And the minus is part of the equation, and then the down is the negative. So I have a double negative there, which would be a positive. And then my radius is 3 square root of 2, but the formula says to square it, so I'm going to write it like that. So I don't need the minus 0 there, so that would just be x squared. And then I have y plus 4, and then squared. So here on the 3 square root of 2, when that is squared, so I'm going to do that off to the side here, that means I'm multiplying it by itself, right? Isn't that what squared means? And so this is 3 times 3, which is 9. And then the square root of 4, because 2 times 2 is 4. And the square root of 4 is 2, so then I'm multiplying just 9 times 2 which is 18. So 3 squared is 9, and then the square root of 2 squared is 2. So that would be 3 squared is 9, square root of 2 squared is 2, and 9 times 2 is 18. Okay? So either way, right? Write it twice and work it out, or you can go straight to this step here. So 3 squared is 9, root 2 squared is 2. And then let's take a look at question number 17 here. So for this one, I want to complete the square and write the trinomial as a perfect square. So for completing the square, I want to take my linear term, which is my x term, and I want to divide that by 2. So I'm going to take negative 20 and take half of that number. So half of negative 20 is negative 10. And then I want to square it. Right, so we take half of b and then square it. So negative 10 squared is positive 100. And so that's what I need to add to both sides of the equation to complete the square. So now I want to factor this, right? I want to factor that, so group it. And it should always be the same thing twice because that's what I'm trying to do. That's my goal. So I don't need to list my factors. I can, but I don't need to. And so when I factor this, it will just be x minus 10 squared and equals negative 2 plus 100, which is 98. Okay. So if you're not sure where I got that from, so let me go ahead and erase this part and say do it a little different. So I'm trying to factor this, so if I list my factors... And I look to see, okay, which pair of numbers here will work to give me the negative 20. It will be 10 and 10, and they both have to be negative. So I would have x minus 10 twice, and then that's how I'm getting that. So that's another way to look at it if you're not understanding that this is just a perfect square. And so the negative 2 plus 100 is 98, and then I have x minus 10 squared. Okay, and then let's take a look at question number 21. So I have a fraction here, and so again, I want to always take half of my linear term. So I want to take half of two-thirds. So one-half of two-thirds. So the twos cancel, leaving me with just one over three. And then I want to square it to find my constant. So one times one, and then three times three. So I'm adding one-ninth to both sides. And then to factor this, so this is always going to be the half of my value, right? So always the one-third. And then it's positive, so y plus one-third. So it's always going to be that one-half part, right? So the one-third. So just like over here, if I look back at this one, half of the negative 20 is negative 10, right? Or you can list your factors. This one, we can't list our factors very easily. 
So, but we are doing a perfect square trinomial, so it's just half of the two-thirds, which is one-third. And then now I need to add together one-third and one-ninth, so I want to get a common denominator. So I want to add one-third and one-ninth. So my common denominator is nine, so I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by three. So one times three, three times three, and then I'm going to add that to one-ninth and then add my numerators, but not my denominators. So three over nine plus one over nine is just four over nine. So one third plus one ninth, get a common denominator and combine. Okay, and then let's take a look at number 22. So we wanna do the same thing as we did above, they just don't set it up for us, so we have to do that. So I wanna complete the square So I'm mimicking what was happening up here, right, where we have the two numbers we have to add to both sides. And I'm just gonna do that for myself. And so I wanna take half of negative six, so half of negative six, which is negative three, right? So half of six is three, and then multiply it by itself, so square it. So negative three times negative three, and then so I wanna add nine to both sides. Four plus nine is 13. And then I wanna group this or factor it. So because it's a perfect square, I'm just gonna use my um, half of my linear term. So it would be x minus three and then squared. And then that's it for number 22.